Hey, welcome back. Today our path is going to lead us to something cool called a de Bruijn sequence. Okay, if we're looking for a counterexample to the 3n plus 1 conjecture, we can hypothesize some sequence of up and down moves, and then solve for the m that if you start with m, you wind up looping back to m. And if m's an integer, then we found a counterexample, a 3n plus 1 loop full of integers. Or we can try to show that m is never going to be an integer for any sequence. And we've been able to rule out so far different kinds of loops, like circuits or high loops, such as this one. And we found that if there are two members of any loop whose up-down sequences match for at least half the length of the loop, then we know the difference between those members can't be an integer. And so the loop can't contain integers. Uh, now, if we start with uh, any up-down sequence, we can generate all the members of its loop by rotating the sequence. So this loop member follows the trajectory up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up. And if we rotate it to the left, we get the next loop member, which follows the trajectory down, up, up, down, up, down, up, up. So given any circular sequence, we're really asking whether there's a long subsequence that appears twice inside of it. You know, for the circuit loop, this subsequence appears twice here and here. And for the high loop, this subsequence appears twice here and here wrapping around. And for this regular loop, uh, if you remember this one, this subsequence appears twice here and here. Uh, so we've really boiled things down now to finding the longest repeated substring inside a binary string. We can consider yellow up moves as one and blue down moves as zero. And biologists who study RNA and DNA, among other people, are very interested in finding long repeated substrings. And there are efficient algorithms to do it. OK, so how about this random sequence? Does it have any long repeated substring? Well, this tiny length 2 subsequence definitely repeats. For example, here and here. And this length 3 subsequence appears here and here. Uh, but if we keep searching, we'll find that the longest repeated substring we can find is this one. OK, and that's shorter than half the sequence length, so our no integer proof method won't apply to this one. Um, and that means we can't rotate our way to two different loop members whose tra trajectories are super simple, similar. <laughs> OK, so, but this is a random sequence, so it's hard to prove anything about a random sequence. So how about can we construct a circular sequence that's guaranteed to be the worst case for our method, one whose longest repeated substring is provably short? So I tried Googling that, and Google's like, huh? Anyway, eventually, with enough search terms, the interwebs finally sent me to the right page, and the answer is yes. Such a construction dates back to 1894. And it's called a de Bruijn sequence. And here's one of length 8. 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. It's designed so that every possible subsequence of length 3 occurs exactly once. So here's 1, 1, 1. Here's uh, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, uh, and so forth. And then wrapping around 0, 0, 1 and 0, 1, 1. So none of those occurred twice. And so the longest repeated sequence is of length 2. And here's a de Bruijn sequence of length 16. And here, every subsequence of length 4 is represented, including 1, 1, 1, 1, and 0, 0, 0, 0, and all the rest of them. None of them repeat, so only sequences of length 3 repeat, such as 1, 1, 1, which appears here and here. You get the idea. In a de Bruijn sequence of length n, the longest repeated subsequence uh, has length that's logarithmic in n. And that's way less than half of n. So a de Bruijn sequence kind of poses the toughest case for our no integer 3n plus 1 proofs so far. OK, so how do you make a de Bruijn sequence? All right, here's one way. Start with uh, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, and 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Then connect up the 1s to the 1s and the zeros to the zeros and write the indices below. Now start with index 1. Go straight up, then follow the link. Back to 1. OK, on to the next unprocessed index 2. 
straight up, then follow the link to three. Straight up, follow the link to five. Straight up, follow the link, then we're back to two. Okay, and the next unprocessed index is four. Up and link to seven, up and link to six, then back to four. Okay, and then what's left over is eight. Okay, so now we've got some permuted indices, which we use to read off the zeros and ones from the top sequence. And we get one, 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 zero, one, zero, 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 a de Bruijn sequence. Yeah, pretty easy. That's the crazy thing about math. We need to some sequence with no long repeats, and sure enough, some mathematician has already, thankfully, inexplicably studied the heck out of this. Now, one wrinkle, these de Bruijn sequences here have equal numbers of zeros and ones, but our 3n plus 1 sequences need to have about 60% ones. And, uh, but this kind of looks like the circuit loop, and this kind of looks like the high loop, with ones spread evenly through zeros. So we can run the same de Bruijn construction using circuits and high loops. And if we do that, empirically, these de Bruijn-like sequences have uh, longest repeated substrings of length log k times log 3, or about 1.6 log k. And once k gets big, it's hard to, to beat these de Bruijn sequences by sampling random loops. Though the expectation for our random loop is also logarithmic. In any case, the de Bruijn sequence gives us a new challenge. So in the last episode, we called it the, the nasty loop. Can we prove that the nasty loop can't be composed of integers? Or maybe some nasty loop out there is a bona fide counterexample. Okay, let's take that up next time.